So uh, welcome Roberto, welcome Leonardo. Uh, they work in INVAP, uh, the leading company for aerospace applications and uh, nuclear energy in Argentina. And yes, the floor is yours. Just uh, you can share your screen and start the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, my name is Leonardo de Amonte. As Carlos said, uh, I work uh, at INVAP. It's a company that uh, develop uh, complex uh, technology projects uh, in Argentine, but also uh, outside of Argentine, abroad. So, um, well, uh, the and, and this kind of of projects that we work, uh, for example, uh, in the nuclear industry. Uh, satellite applications, uh, radars, and others. The the importance of electronic has become more and more uh, important, and the development of a new uh, integrated circuits with leading edge technology uh, has become uh, also uh, disruptive. So the, um, there is a, a, um, an idea to, to use uh, this technology uh, for our projects. And um, the, the nature of, of this new electronic um, is a little, uh, slightly different from the, the traditional or previous one because uh, the miniaturization of, of uh, the, com the electronic components, in particular transistors, uh, as, as I'm sorry, sorry uh, Leonardo, I think you are not uh, sharing your presentation. No, not yet. Yes, it's true. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to share uh, my screen. Yes. Uh, it can be seen the Perfect. presentation. Can see? Yes, thank you, Leonardo. Okay, so um, the the, stu the study is um, how to calculate the um, failure rate of, of new uh, leading edge uh, CMOS integrated circuits. Um, for for this purpose, uh, we uh, make use. Of, of different mechanisms of failures uh, and uh, to evaluate these uh, mechanisms of failures uh, use the uh, 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 algorithm with uh, Monte Carlo calculus. So, uh, as, as we said, uh, the the electronics nowadays uh, has al almost always integrated uh, circuits, not discrete uh, circuits. It, it means not uh, separate uh, uh, individual transistors uh, and other devices interconnected in in, uh, in a board. Uh, instead of that, we, we have very little amount of discrete uh, components and uh, a, a great integration in, 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 in chips, in integrated circuits, where the CMOS technology uh, has become the, the more important in, in, in the majority of, of, of the applications. Um, this this uh, image, this this chart shows uh, the the velocity of incrementation of meter, 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 uh, integration of, of different uh, um, components in a, in a integrated circuit. Um, this is a, a conjecture done by Moore, uh, known as as uh, Moore's law, uh, that the um, a number of, of transistors on, on chips doubles every two years 
this conjecture uh, is verified uh, by by the, the the reality the 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 growing integration of of uh, transistors in 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 new integrated circuits uh, every year this, this chart uh, shows uh, that that uh, verification of uh, Moore's law in the reality. So when we uh, want to use uh, the leading edge CMOS technology in in our projects, uh, we need to establish uh, the the failure rate of the, the electronics uh, in order to estimate the the a uh, 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 reliability of the time mission expected for for that application. So, uh, in order to to establish the the failure rate of of the integrated circuits, the um, manufacturers uh, use uh, accelerated uh, stress testing in order to obtain uh, in, in, in a reasonable time uh, this, this failure rate because the, the idea of, of uh, put uh, a, a, a significant population of, of chips uh, in, in normal conditions and, and wait to a significant number two fails in order to obtain a representative uh, failure rate is impractical. So uh, the, um, uh, the manufacturers and the standards um, ask for uh, uh, accelerated uh, stress testing. And, and this uh, kind of, of testing um, you increase the stress over the the microchips and and then the the, the the failure rate of the test is accelerated then you can uh, apply a, a accelerator factor and in this, in that way you you can obtain uh, the the failure rate in in real conditions of operation but in, in, in uh, just in, in the in the term of real conditions, there is normally there is a problem. Uh, Roberto uh, said, uh, observed that the the manufacturers and and, and testers uh, make use of um, constant conditions. For, for example, uh, a fixed temperature and a fixed uh, voltage of operation. And uh, of course, this no, isn't the, the reality. And, and this kind of estimation uh, is suspected to, to have uh, a, a lot of, of, of difference between uh, the, the, this estimation with the reality. Uh, and even the accelerated test uh, estimate the failure rate with a, a dominant uh, failure mechanism and the leading edge technology uh, uh, has no longer an only one dominant uh, failure mechanism. So the, the accumulated uh, mistakes lately in the estimation uh, provided by the manufacturers it, it, it become uh, at a certain level in, in a setup. So we we think, Roberto uh, think and I collaborated with him, uh, a, a, a method to, to est better estimate the real failure rate of, of leading uh, CMOS integrated circuits. Uh, so, um, it is important to remark that in the past, the dominant uh, uh, mechanism that uh, provo uh, provokes the failure of, of the 
electronics was mainly the, the, the temperature and, and the evenness technology is no longer true. So the also depends on, on the operating voltage in, in the microchip. Uh, and an other important thing is that the oh, uh, in the past we supposed that and, and, and it was true in the past that only high temperatures stress really stress the the, the electronics and this is also in the leading technology another mistake nowadays because low operating temperatures also in, in certain failure mechanisms provokes uh, failures of, of the of the electronics so the um, the failure mechanism uh, detected in the leading CMOS technology are are all are mainly for uh, presented here uh, electromigration, tank dependent dielectric breakdown, hot carrier injection, and bias thermal instability. So, um, the, the studies of, of these uh, failure mechanisms uh, give us uh, the, the, a, a, a several uh, for, uh, formulas that are. Uh, all um, empirical and uh, as uh, you can see involves temperature but also involves uh, the operating voltage of the integrated circuit uh, so the um, the dependence uh, with the temperature and voltage is strong in the, the, the equations show uh, give, give us that uh, information uh, and the uh, parameters in, in, in these uh, equations are obtained uh, experimentally. So uh, in, in the next uh, slides, I asked uh, Roberto to continue the presentation. Uh, that is more uh, um, familiar with, with this uh, study. Roberto. Sí, eh, deberías dejar de compartir el... You, you should... Uh... Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, I uh, enable to share your, your screen. Okay. The, the, the thing we, we want to... To show here that there is a very important mismatch between uh, the information that provides the manufacturers of these devices and the um, real information that we need. Uh, this because the uh, speed at which uh, the evolution of this type of uh, components, devices, uh, um, has been so fast that um, standards uh, have not followed the, um, the requirements that the industry require, uh, uh, needs for having good information on the reliability of this device. This is important because uh, living age it's important basically in leading edge components because uh, these components uh, normally uh, are not, are, are not uh, uh, used for critical applications uh, like space. However, uh, today there are more and more companies beginning to use this uh, and it's very important to have very good information uh, for uh, predicting the reliability of this company. So what you see here in these two graphs are 
three of the four mechanisms of degradation of, the, of these devices. Uh, and you can see very three or four things very important. The red line is for one of the mechanisms, HCI, that in all uh, technologies was not so important as today. His mechanism works uh, in completely different way. That is, uh, low temperatures make it more uh, significant in the calculation of the failure rate. And also, you can see here that at, uh, in, the, in the left uh, graph, you can see here that at high temperatures, the electro migration, that is the blue line, domains. However, a very little more uh, voltage in the power supply, uh, the, the, the more significant mechanism is time dielectric, uh, time dependent dielectric breakdown. So today, uh, in, in, all, in all technologies, there was, this was not important because in those, uh, the, in those technologies, there was one dominant mechanism and also the temperature was the main stress factor. Today, in new technologies, you have uh, very different behaviors. Sorry, in the second. Roberto, we, we can hear you. Yes, and see, but. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have a problem to, to pass the. Switch the slide. You can also close this one and open it in the next slide if that's easier. I don't know. Uh, or you can show it like that if it's easier. Don't worry about. Uh, 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 wait, wait a minute. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay. We uh, we propose here. We 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 have found some mistakes in the way to. Uh, the old ways to estimate the uh, failure rates. And we propose here to fix these estimation mistakes in first place by solving the physical failure acceleration models for all the significant failure mechanisms. In second place, by considering not only the temperature, but also the voltage dependence. And finally, and the more important one, is to take into account all the fluctuations that the operational and environmental conditions produce during normal use. In, so in this case, we use we make a, a calculation with Monte Carlo for this, uh, for this case to show that these a very different uh, results using a constant temperature uh, and a constant voltage and then taking into account all the fluctuations uh, that uh, are produced in the real use of the component. In this example, we use, um, uh, we calculate the uh, reliability, the, the uh, failure rate for a technology not of 90 nanometers technology. Uh, we use, in this case, we consider only three uh, failure mechanisms that are time dependent electric background, whole carrier injection, and electromigration. Uh, we have uh, achieved the models, we have achieved the uh, empirical parameters, and we use for the power voltage um, a standard distribution, probability distribution around the, uh, the um, uh, a power voltage, uh, the normal power voltage, and a normal 
uh, and uniform distribution for all the temperature range. We consider here H cases with H different um, uh, temperature ranges, and uh, we keep the power voltage constant, we keep the low temperature range, uh, extreme constant, but we, what we uh, change the, uh, the high uh, the, the high stream of temperature, maximum uh, uh, temperature. So um, we uh, applied for uh, all these eight cases, uh, Monte Carlo, and we achieved the following results. In this case, the blue line represents the calculation of the model using, considering the three failure modes, but using a constant temperature uh, identical at maximum temperature of the range. The orange line represents the H cases, considering as the temperature of calculation constant, but using the mean value of the temperature range. And the gray case, the gray case is the result from using Monte Carlo. You can see here that um, the use of the maximum temperature, constant temperature, that, uh, the maximum or the mean value are uh, produce pessimistic or optimistic estimation. But the use of Monte Carlo produce an optimal estimation. And also, you can see that the differences are very important. So our conclusion are that the technology of electronic devices and their potential applications has advanced much faster than the reliability standards. It's therefore essential to be able to determine as accurately as possible the failure rate of these components. The fa this failure rate is strongly dependent on the environmental and operating conditions that the device will have to withstand. The usual procedures provide failure rate values for this application that are either of too optimistic or too pessimistic. A technique based on the use of physical failure modeling and Monte Carlo processing is proposed here to improve the reliability estimation of this type of device. Okay, this is all we have to present here. I hope uh, you uh, enjoy it.